semiconductors are very, very strong. That's pro it's probably the most, um, I would say, consistent, right? Isn't that the best way of saying it? Probably the most consistent group uh, in the market. And again, if you look at uh, some of the semiconductor names. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well before we get to uh, all the goodies uh, about the stock market, all the baddies and all the stuff that's completely indifferent. Uh, the boys, Kyler and Kenyon, who run the ship here, uh, told me to give you guys a couple of tidbits uh, for all you guys because we get a lot of uh, emails to support about you know different components uh, of the PS60 theory. Uh, there is a, a seven hour, three, seven hours, something like that, something free uh, that you can literally break down the PS60 theory. There's a lot of moving parts. Uh, it's an advanced way to trade. There's a lot of moving averages in Bollinger Band and linear regression lies, a lot of moving parts that you really have to understand. It's pretty um, it's pretty advanced, but uh, it is pretty cool. And there is something, if you click the link somewhere, anywhere here, um, you will see there's like a, a, a link. You put in your email and you get a three hour, uh, you get the three hour workshop. Uh, also, if you'd like to take advantage, if you're kind of trying to figure out if pivots are for you, there's a, a year end, well, excuse me, summer end, um, kind of a trial. I don't know what exactly it is. It's a kind of a trial for 30 days to kind of see everything play out. So if it is for you, if you're thinking about it, uh, two cool things. Start definitely with the workshop. Watch the workshop over and over and over again. It's like three hours, three and a half hours. Kind of break down the theory. And then if you'd like, uh, there is a 30-day um, there is a 30-day uh, access to the webinar. It's only like 47 bucks uh, to see, to kick the tires, to see exactly if it fits for you. So you just kind of wanted to make that announcement and let's move on. So summertime trading, uh, we got about, what, two and a half weeks. Uh, everything's kind of going sideways. So you can see the market is just slowly but surely melting up, uh, going sideways. Um, you know, copacetic, right? Every single day. Uh, there's some good things. There are definitely some bad things. Uh, there's things that you kind of scratch your head. Um, but overall, this past week was pretty solid, right? Um, you know, you had Tesla finally reclaiming this $700 area. And we'll get to Tesla in a second. I was a little disappointed of, of the price action on Friday. Uh, you had NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA is another one that I love, 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 love this whole week. Had a really, really nice move uh, to the top of the channel. It took out that $200 area, finally, of several areas of rejection, finally reclaimed the traded all the way up to the 207 and change level. I still think the stock has a, has a shot at this uh, 208.75, 209 area ahead of earnings. We'll see. And at this point, it really doesn't make, make a difference. Uh, Bitcoin exploded, taking everything with it. You have the coin stop moves, right? You have the coin stop that's attempting to come out of the range. This is the highest close in this whole formation. Uh, names, you know, names, for example, like Roku that even though came out with, you know, looks like pretty crappy earnings, they, you know, they, they didn't look horrible, right? They had that big move lower prior to earnings. They're still well within their range. A name like Netflix that didn't have a great earnings quarter, but it's kind of sitting in the middle of its range. So the market is still holding fairly well. Uh, Facebook woke up this week. We talked about the Facebook range uh, off the 10-day moving average. There's a lot of pluses, right? There's definitely a lot of pluses. Uh, and somebody could turn around and say, well, nothing's going to materialistically change. Uh, we should melt up till Labor Day, and the real market um, should start there, right? It should literally start there. As I as I joke around all the time, um, especially on social media when there's a hot stock running, and I just say, just put the stock at 1,000 and start from there. Well, a lot of people just think, just put the market at all-time highs uh, at Labor Day, and we'll start from there. They're not wrong, right? They're absolutely not wrong. But the reality is, you know, the market has its – you know, its own way of doing things. And, you know, going into Friday session, just to give you an example, my week was basically uh, Tesla and the video for the first part of the week. And we kind of got to Friday. And I, I tell you, and this is where, you know, the, the, this is where we say uh, the market does whatever it wants. Our job is only to get ready for it, to kind of prepare for it. So I was so, we, we had so many value setups from Friday session, right? Like I give you a perfect example. Tesla was building 
for four days in a row above the 700 day moving average on every dip we saw this week we saw deep out of the money calls on any sell-off so i said to myself friday's the day right friday's the day it's setting up perfectly right this is going into friday's session it's setting up perfectly for friday the weekly buyers they're going to get paid yada 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 i looked at amazon right looked at amazon going into friday look at this channel right look at this channel yeah the monster monster channel remember this isn't an ordinary stock that missed their numbers this is Amazon. The longer the, the stock market can embrace the quarter, eventually you're going to shake this off and move it higher. So I was watching Amazon. I go, wow, this thing is going to explode. I'm so ready for Amazon. We're waiting for Zoom. 52-week highs, right? 52-week highs are about to come. They're about to come on deck. It's about to get good, right? You have NVIDIA. NVIDIA is going to go to all-time highs. And again, eSignal still hasn't, uh, still hasn't updated um, its split. But you can see the top of the range here. And... Um, economic numbers came out on Friday, everything gapped down. But the one thing I've always maintained, especially, uh, especially in a bullish cycle is any gap down is usually, you know, is usually a high probability. The channels back to the upside are going to reclaim and they're going to go again. And I was waiting for the video. I was waiting on Amazon. I was waiting on zoom. I was waiting on this, I was waiting on that, I was waiting for the third, and yada, 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 and nothing happened. And I, I think out of the most, out of all the stocks, and again, you, if, you look at, uh, if you look at what happened on the indexes for the first, uh, for the first, you know, for the first part of the week, you know, very, very strong, they all, you know, everything, S&P, Q's, uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, everything is up 1%, so there's nothing really to read into the technical part. And again, if you believe in the whole theory, we're probably going to melt up all the way uh, to Labor Day. At least, you know, the, the technicals kind of correspond. The action kind of corresponds. But the, the one thing that I was very, you know, I was very, very disappointed in uh, Tesla's price action. And, you know, the juries kind of see uh, after that big Monday move run, I wanted to see a rest. We got the rest. But in between the rest, we were getting really good sneaky channels back to the upside. So it was some really good value on Tesla uh, this week prior, uh, prior to Friday's session. And I kept on reiterating the point over and over, over and over. I would love to see that one washout. You guys remember that? I said that a few times throughout the week. I would love to see one washout trap on the bottom of the range, go red to green and go. So I was so convinced Friday this was going to happen. And, you know, it was already in my head. And I, 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 you know, the, the one thing you can do again, you can't predict price action before it confirms, but you can do the research, right? You can be prepared. So when the price action plays out in your theory, uh, you should be good to go. And Friday, you had Tesla opening lower and it, it stopped perfectly on the five day moving average, right? The five day moving average rose and it went red to green. So I bought it red to green the first time and the stock was up like two bucks right stock was up two bucks and it got stuck i didn't make any sales the reason why i didn't make any sales usually you know i usually take some sales get some cash flow and kind of manage the trade but i was so convinced because we spent four days above 700 dollars and kept on seeing order flow and collecting data that they were buying out of the money calls i said to myself well you know let me skip you know let me get that big move and at worst case scenario at the top of the range here this could be a macro full position all go into the 780 channel and it went up a couple of bucks. I didn't take it off. I broke even. And I saw the stock go red. And I go, well, that's weird, right? That's weird. But let's see how it plays out. And it started getting stronger again. And it tested the same channel. And it kind of came back in. So we already knew that, you know what? It's going to, it's, I don't want to short the stock off that 707 level just because I don't want to get trapped in my own theory and they finally make me whole. Let's watch for that 696. You guys remember we kind of talk about that 696 washout? Let's watch for that 696 washout. So it finally washes out. It finally washes out, but it didn't hit in the 696. It hit like 97 and change, which kind of correlated uh, with the low here from August the 2nd. And it went back higher, right? It went back higher, reclaimed 701. I completely butchered it, really, really butchered it. Um, I got long off the 701 remount and I did it too fast, okay? I needed, I, I should have waited for that longer move down and then snap back over 701, but I didn't, okay? And again, it wound up costing me only a buck. So it really wasn't the point of the money. It was more of the execution. So I, wa I wound up seeing it reclaim 701, trade back to like 705 and change. And I, at that point, I was really getting irritated. So I said to myself, 
I should really watch now for the red to green and yada, yada, yada. It never got there. And then it closed at the bottom of the range here. So the jury on Tesla, I, I don't want to turn around for Monday session and turn around and say, well, now that it closed below 700 bucks, the stock is a short. I don't want to go there yet because there's still an area here that it could test, reclaim, and, and trap. Because think about this. We were in a channel from June the 24th all the way to July, July the 30th. So you had over a, a month and a week of distribution. The last thing you want to do, and again, keep this in mind, I put up like an $80, uh, $80 move within that time. So the last thing you want to do is try to say to yourself, well, now the stock is a short, it failed the 700 level, it closed below the 700 level. This whole 150 day moving average, I still want to watch because again, if we do get, if we do get a gap down open, okay, and, and again, I'm just brainstorming. That's what I do. I, yeah, you have to play devil's advocate. If it opens down and they reclaim the 150-day moving average, it goes red to green, hey, maybe then we kind of get what we wanted to see on Friday. So the jury is actually open. I want to see how uh, Tesla trades Monday for me to kind of get a broader opinion on it. Uh, but for now, I want to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt just for a couple of hours, and then we'll kind of reassess there. Uh, a name, for example, like NVIDIA. Semiconductors are very, very strong. That's pro it's probably the most, um, I would say, consistent, right? Isn't that the best way of saying it? Probably the most consistent group uh, in the market. And again, if you look at uh, some of the semiconductor names that have been doing really, really well, like the AMD, again, who could have thought in their wildest dreams a run from 89 to, to what, 123? Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal run. It's back testing. Probably get a, you know, probably get a dip back here. Uh, to this 103, 104 level, right? Uh, for maybe for a possible entry. But the semiconductor has been really, really good. Um, the jury is still out on the video. Does it have one more run uh, ahead of earnings? It looks really good. But names that, that look really good in the semi space, look at Micron, right? Check out Micron. Micron is very close getting out of this whole channel. You see how many times, guys, it, it's held this bottom channel? Again, part of the whole PS60 theory, the whole theory is stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand. So you can see uh, this was supply, and it hit supply here three times in a row, and it got rejected, you know, three times. If Micron could just get above this channel here, this thing could wake up. This thing could be really, really good. A name like Clack that had phenomenal earnings, it's going sideways right now. The same thing as well. So I, I do think there's a lot of value uh, in a lot of semiconductor names. Uh, MU, I'm definitely watching uh, for Monday. Clack, I'm definitely watching for this week. Again, you can see it just going sideways. The buyers are comfortable. The sellers are comfortable. Let's see if it could take out the earnings high and start its next leg up. Even names, you know, even names like Splunk, right, in the internet security area, had a finally big move out of this distribution. Let's see if it wakes up again. Uh, a name like Snow it that had this really big move. You guys remember, I think it was from Tuesday's session, finally took out that 275 level, just absolutely exploded. You can see the same thing in Splunk. And this is why it's so important. That, that's why a lot of new traders ask, hey, Dan, how can we have so many lines? These, the reason why these things stop is because of these silly little lines, right? These are points of reference points that if you don't know they're there, you're going to get rejected every single time. So the same way Micron got rejected three times into the same area here is the same way Snow got rejected on this linear regression line three separate times. But if you don't have these areas uh, plotted on your charts, you're trading blind. You don't know why they're stopping. They're just stopping. So you can see snow as well. It's, it's got rejected three times off the same area. If it reclaims, maybe this thing starts waking up. Even a name like IBM, which I'm not a, a big fan of, you can't deny this chart, right? It got rejected twice off the 50-day moving average. If IBM reclaims this 50-day moving average, you, you literally have a really good channel, especially if you option trades. It might take a while but you have seven to eight dollars back to the next supply zone uh, to kind of, you know, to, to kind of really, you know, really engage in a pretty good swing. Obviously, give yourself some time, uh, allocate proper tier size. But there's definitely value uh, in a lot of names going forward. The names that you kind of want to stay away from. Again, it's still these China names. They're just literally all over the place. Um, I still believe names like you know AMC. Uh, names like GameStop, there's probably better value continuing to the downside. If you've been kind of watching this broadcast uh, for the last, you know, even for the last week, we have tons of pivots to the downside on G uh, GameStop, on AMC. Uh, again, are the snapbacks aggressive? Sure. 
you know, absolutely they are. But you can see here, they keep on getting rejected off this uh, declining moving, you know, moving averages. And, and when they kind of roll over and take out the previous day's high, uh, you start your next cycle uh, of selling. So kind of going into this week, um, I do like the semiconductor names, um, some storage names uh, look pretty good. Some software names like a snow uh, looks really good. I, I don't know if they're cloud or whatever the case may be. Uh, they look good. Look at the financials. For all you guys who trade financials, look at a name like J.P. Morgan, right? J.P. Morgan, it looks just like IBM. If you know, if if they have any uh, type of rates that potentially could go uh, start to rise, again, obviously financials is going to do re really, really well. So you know, J.P. Morgan is literally one day away. Again, if you go through the whole group, uh, you could see Morgan Stanley very strong. Citibank kind of looks like J.P. Morgan. Uh, Goldman Sachs is literally breaking out, has one, you know, literally, if it could confirm uh, this 400 area on Goldman Sachs, you know, GS could fly. Guys, watch this Goldman Sachs. It's not on the watch list officially, but uh, keep an eye on Goldman. This thing starts building above 400. You could get your next leg up as well. So I, I think we have to kind of accept everything in the market. Um, the one, you know, the one thing you could only control is your trading, is your emotion, is your research from the night before. Uh, like we said on Friday, it was disappointing Friday, not because it was a schnikey, right? I don't want to use the word. Uh, you know, it was a crappy day. It was disappointing on Friday because the channels that we were watching from the previous night's research didn't confirm. And that's kind of out of our hands. We can control our emotions. We can control our fear of missing out, we can control uh, our tier size and risk management, all that exposure, but the only thing we can't do is manage what the market wants to do that day. Remember, we want to trade, but we don't have to trade. You think you need to trade, but you don't have to trade. Again, we want to make sure we're trading when there's value and not because the stock market is open. So going into this week, guys, I am, you know, I'm bullish until I'm not, right? Until we start uh, breaking down macro levels, you have to stay bullish. Uh, there's no reason the indexes are telling us uh, that we are about to collapse. Uh, you know, could we have aggressive pulls intraday? Of course, that's what happens when there's a linear market. But from the all tense of purposes, the, the, the signs and all the data continues to point that there's sector rotations. Uh, and you can see just by what we talked about, they're going to storage, semiconductors, banks, uh, maybe not the traditional names that we trade, but the point is the market is still humming along. So guys, have a great day. And again, for all you guys who are interested in pivots or just want to check it out, again, kind of revert to what we talked about at the beginning of the broadcast uh, and make sure that, again, before you commit to a trading style, you get all the information about everything and see if it's the right for you. Guys, have a great day. Have an awesome weekend. Have a great week. And with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.